lung expansion therapy involves several techniques in respiratory care that are designed to prevent or correct atelectasis. In this video, we will provide an overview of the different procedures that can be used to promote lung expansion and treat or prevent alveolar collapse. So if you're ready, let's get into it. First and foremost, we need to talk about atelectasis. Atelectasis is a term that refers to a collapse in the alveoli of the lungs. It could be a total collapse of an entire lung or a partial collapse of one or more lobes. As you take a breath in, air moves through the mouth and trachea down through the airways of the lungs until it reaches the tiny air sacs that are known as alveoli. This is where the gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide takes place. Therefore, if air fails to reach this region, it can result in many different problems within the body. When this occurs, the alveoli that are not filled with air cannot expand. And this is what's known as atelectasis. Atelectasis is common in post-operative patients where it can occur during or after the procedure. The reason is that surgery often causes shallow breathing, which results in inadequate airflow to the alveolar region of the lungs. Atelectasis can also be caused by an airway obstruction, mucus plug, lung tumor, pleural effusion, pneumothorax, tuberculosis, and respiratory muscle weakness. The elderly population and those who smoke cigarettes are also at a higher risk for atelectasis. The symptoms of atelectasis will depend on the severity and location of the collapse. In some cases, there may be no symptoms at all. However, in other instances, patients may experience shortness of breath, chest pain, wheezing, fatigue, cyanosis, and tachypnea. The treatment for atelectasis may vary depending on the patient's signs and symptoms. However, the most effective treatment method involves correcting the underlying cause of the patient's alveolar collapse. In general, post-surgical atelectasis can be treated and prevented with different types of lung expansion therapy, which is the topic of this video. As previously mentioned, lung expansion therapy involves several respiratory care procedures and techniques that are designed to treat atelectasis, pneumonia, acute respiratory failure, and other conditions of the lungs. The modalities that can be used in lung expansion therapy include early patient mobilization, deep breathing and directed cough, incentive spirometry, CPAP, positive airway pressure, IPPB, and a high flow nasal cannula. The techniques that are used will be based on the individual patient's needs and the severity of their condition. So now let's talk about each of the different types. One of the best ways to prevent atelectasis is through early patient mobilization. This means that patients should be encouraged to get out of bed and move around as soon as possible after surgery. Prolonged bed rest is linked to an increased risk of several complications, including pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, deep venous thrombosis, and atelectasis. However, early ambulation improves ventilation and gas distribution which decreases the risk of alveolar collapse. Deep breathing exercises and directed coughing can help treat patients with atelectasis by clearing secretions and recruiting collapsed alveoli. Patients who are able to do deep breathing exercises on their own can be instructed to take slow, deep breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. Then they can follow up a deep breathing cycle with a forceful cough. Patients who are unable to cough will need to use a different treatment method. The next type is incentive spirometry, which is a technique in which patients use a handheld device to take sustained maximum inspirations. The goal is to reach a predetermined volume of air that is initially set by the respiratory therapist. This technique can improve lung function and prevent atelectasis by mimicking natural sighing, stimulating deep breathing, expanding the lungs, increasing alveolar ventilation, and improving inspiratory muscle performance. The potential outcomes of incentive spirometry include decreased atelectasis, improved breath sounds, improved chest x-ray, increased SpO2, increased vital capacity, a stronger cough, and improved respiratory muscle performance. CPAP is another type of lung expansion therapy that we need to discuss. 
is a technique in which a machine delivers air through a mask that covers the nose and mouth. The air pressure is adjusted so that it is slightly higher than the atmospheric pressure. This technique is commonly used to treat sleep apnea, but it can also be used to treat atelectasis. CPAP helps prevent atelectasis by keeping the airways open, improving gas exchange, and providing positive end expiratory pressure. Other potential outcomes of CPAP therapy include increased oxygenation, improved vital capacity, a stronger cough, and improved patient comfort. Next, we have positive airway pressure, which is a technique in which a device delivers positive pressure to improve lung expansion. It involves the use of PEP, Flutter, and CPAP. PEP and Flutter can be used for airway clearance therapy. However, we're looking at how PAP can be used to treat and prevent atelectasis. In general, positive airway pressure therapy helps increase the patient's functional residual capacity. This results in the opening of collapsed alveoli, increased lung compliance, decreased work of breathing, improved collateral ventilation, and enhanced secretion removal. Another type of lung expansion therapy is IPPB, or intermittent positive pressure breathing. It's a type of non-invasive ventilation that delivers positive pressure during inspiration and then returns to atmospheric pressure during expiration. The machine is capable of providing full ventilatory support. However, that is not its intended use. IPPB was designed to help patients take deeper breaths, stimulate a cough, and prevent or decrease atelectasis. It's effective in doing so because it improves gas exchange, increases lung compliance, and reduces the patient's work of breathing. Other potential outcomes of IPPB therapy include improved breath sounds, increased oxygenation, improved vital capacity, improved chest x-ray, and a stronger cough. Next up is a high-flow nasal cannula. It's a type of non-invasive ventilation that delivers a high flow of warm, humidified oxygen through a nasal cannula that has larger prongs. This allows higher flow rates to be delivered, which provides the patient with a high level of comfort. The high-flow nasal cannula has many potential benefits for patients with atelectasis. It provides enhanced flow, which helps wash out CO2 from anatonic dead space. It can also provide a more stable FiO2. In addition, this device also delivers a small amount of positive pressure as the patient breathes against higher inspiratory flows. This helps with the recruitment of collapsed alveoli, which explains why a high-flow nasal cannula is effective in treating and preventing atelectasis. So just to give a quick recap, the most effective types of lung expansion therapy include early patient mobilization, deep breathing and directed cough, incentive spirometry, CPAP, positive airway pressure therapy, IPPB, and the use of a high flow nasal cannula. Lung expansion therapy is a very important topic, which is why you must develop an understanding of the different types. Hopefully you can use this video along with other resources on our channel and website to make the learning process much easier. And if you don't mind, do me a huge favor and hit the like button. It really helps support the channel and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And you might as well go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this. Hopefully what you learned in this video was useful and can help you develop a better understanding of this topic. If so, be sure to let us know down in the comment section below. And if you want to learn even more, we do have a full guide on our website. I will drop a link to it right below this video down in the description. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. And as always, breathe easy, my friends.